Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was a man of sorrows, and he was rejected and disesteemed of men, you know? So anyway, I wanted to share on this uh, topic of dealing with rejection God's way, because, you know, it, as we grow, I should say in the Lord, not, not just in the earth, but in the Lord, um, you know, you come to see that, you come to understand, you come to know that in us as human beings, there is a, our nature, you know, our natural nature, it wants to be accepted, it wants to be loved, and it just wants to be comfortable. And so if you spend any time walking with the Lord, you find that you're going to be rejected and you're going to be persecuted. You know, you're going to be not treated well. So, you know, like the word says in the last days, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So if you have, you know, done godly things and followed the Lord's instruction in his word, you have surely suffered persecution. Um, but, you know, I just getting older, I've spent some time, you know, looking back at my life. And of course, there's many things, you know, I had disappointments, I've made some bad choices and stuff. But, you know, looking back... I just, this one thing comes to my mind when it, when I, when I'm looking at this, you know, dealing with rejection and sometimes, you know, it's like our whole life is just wrought with tribulation and trials. If you belong to the Lord, that's just the way it is. And I, I've been thinking on this one time when I worked for this lady and this man, it was a husband and wife, they owned a restaurant and I don't know why, but that woman hated me. I mean, she just really hated me. And when I was young, I was so shy and I was just, I did not deal well with being rejected at all. And uh, she was just really mean. And I remember one day, um, I was just so nervous whenever she was there. Her husband wasn't very nice either, but she was really mean. And I remember one day I spilled, a, I was so nervous, I spilled this glass of milk. And I mean, I was two seconds from quitting because I was just mortified. I couldn't handle the way they treated me for no reason whatsoever, you know, they just really didn't like me. But I went out back and when I had a break, I went out back behind the restaurant and I was sitting back there and I was praying, Lord, why does this woman hate me so much? Why, why do they treat me like this? What have I done wrong? And all of a sudden the woman pulls up in her car, she gets out of her car and she looks at me with the, just a look of hate on her face. She said, what are you doing? Praying. <laughs> And then she just went in the building. And then I had to go back in, go back to work, of course. Yeah, I didn't last there much longer. I might have even quit that day. I don't really remember. But the point of sharing this is that, you know, when you belong to the Lord, when Christ is in you, you are marked by the enemy. And he's going to do everything he can to kill you, to destroy you, to throw you off that path. So anyway, I wanted to share on dealing with rejection God's way because... I know at least in my life, I, I didn't deal with it very well in my younger years. And, and I'm sure I still struggle with it today, you know. So, But I, I really realize today, though, that this is part of our walk if we're going to walk with the Lord. And it's easy to be rejected by the world today. But still, it doesn't always come easy to be rejected by Christians. That's the hardest part. And so anyway, but let's get into this because we all we all got to grow in this area, especially now that we're heading into, you know, the worst tribulation and persecution for Christians that ever will be. Okay, Psalm 8, 118, 22 to 24. And this is concerning our Lord. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner, or I'm sorry, the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And now today when we look back, this was, you know, a prophecy in Psalm 118 before the Lord even came. Now we know he is the cornerstone upon which the church is built. He, he died for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins and he rose from the dead. And we do rejoice in this. And that is the day that the Lord made so that we could have salvation and be reconciled to God. Okay, now when we move up to the New Testament, Luke 20, 17 through 18, and this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees and them. He says, And he beheld them and, he, and said, What is this then that is written? 
The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now we know that the stone that has become the corner is the Lord himself. So this is telling us, if you're going to fall upon Christ for salvation, you're going to fall upon him for mercy, you're going to fall upon him for help. Okay, you're going to be broken. You're going to be broken. But it is much better. That is the straight and narrow path. That one that, like it says, we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. That is the path to be chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. You know, few there be that find it. Because most people don't want to deal with it. But, you know, the other path, that wide one, when it says here, on whomsoever it shall fall, okay, that is when God's wrath falls upon you. Okay, it grinds you to powder because like the word says, upon the, the wicked, when it falls, they become chaff because they will be burned up with fire. So we want to make sure we're on that narrow path and just deal, just deal with the rejection, the hate, the persecution, and even death, you know, if need be. Um, he told us here in First Peter chapter 2, verse 20 through 21, for what glory is it if when you're buffeted, or I'm sorry, if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently. But, if, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So right here, we got to know, we have to understand that we will be buffeted, we will suffer, you know, and we are to take it patiently because... Like it says here, this is to what we are called. We are going to follow in Christ's steps. And so it is the way. And it's a way that not many choose to follow. Um, even though they say they're Christians, you know, a lot of people say they're Christians, but they're not really going to follow God's word and live godly and suffer persecution. They're just going to choose the easy way out. But I love this sign. Welcome to rejection. <laughs> Stay strong. Okay, because the path of righteousness, it is a path of rejection. Okay, Philippians 1, 28 through 29 tells us, in, in nothing, terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. This path, it is of God. Okay, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Okay, it is of God. It lets you know when it says here, it is to you of salvation and that of God, because it tells us in the word that we are counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which we suffer. Like it is a sign that we are being counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Because we are suffering, we're being partakers of his sufferings. Then in Hebrews 2, 10 through 11, it says, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifies, that being the Lord Jesus Christ, and they who are sanctified, that being the church, are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. What's he saying here? That he was made perfect through sufferings, and so are we, and therefore we are partakers of his sufferings. We are persecuted for his name's sake. We are treated badly for keeping his word, believing his word, uh, proclaiming his word, okay? So therefore, he's not ashamed to call us brethren. That's a wonderful thing to be a partaker of. Um, so how to be rejected God's way? You know, how do we do that? Um, like it says here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He authored our faith, and the way of faith is to be persecuted and rejected by this world, you know, and to be always continually, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, we do have seasons of rest, he always gives his beloved rest, but we are always attacked, you know, by our enemy, um, but, so looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that is the way, you know, to deal with this rejection, and when we look to him, you know, for wisdom, for knowledge, for strength, they're always looking to him, that's the way, and even him, looking at how he did it, says, Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. And we have a joy set before us also. 
Okay, it says he despised the shame, and it doesn't mean I love this because it means he disesteemed it. He didn't esteem the shame at all. Didn't pay it no mind, okay? And then he is set down after he's overcome, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so will we be like it says here, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So for the joy that is set before us, we also can endure because we're going to have eternity with him. We will see him face to face. And like it says here, the way, you know, the way to behave as we go through this. First Peter 2, 23, who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but he committed himself to him that judges righteously. So it's like the Lord, he humbled himself to death. And he just committed it all to God, who judges righteously. And and then again, for us too, it says in 1 Peter 4, 19, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, just like Jesus suffered according to the will of God, and he committed himself to him that judges righteously, we are to do the same. Let us commit the keeping of our souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay, that's how we do it. We just have to commit it all to God you no, know, in everything give thanks. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, you know, just commit it to God. Trust God. Okay, and then as it says here for Revelations 2.10, fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Okay, do not fear. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Okay, this was written to the church of Smyrna, but his word is living. It endures to all generations. It is forever settled in heaven. So we can take this as our own also. That we should not fear anything that we might suffer. Anything that God allows. We just commit our souls to him. He's the righteous judge. If we have to lay down our lives. He'll be with us. He'll give us the strength. But I always say. you know, Be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> because it is true. He can deliver us from the fiery furnace. But the thing is, be faithful unto death. You know, be willing, knowing that there's a possibility he'll call you to it and be willing to lay down your life. And like it says here, joy and tribulation, rejoice when persecuted for his sake. Okay, don't be depressed. Don't be sad because we're going to have a great reward. The whole purpose is that in all these things, we are being perfected. We are being granted the, the privilege of sharing in Christ's sufferings and our reward is great in heaven so we got to remember these things we're going to rule with the Lord like he says here I will grant you to sit with me in my throne wow okay so we got to keep these things that's how that is how like you know like I said up here how to be rejected God's way rejoice have joy don't lose your peace don't be afraid commit your soul to him and then I wanted to share this end of days warning because we know there's a falling away, and uh, we don't want to be a part of that. But there's something to be seen here. Like in the beginning when I mentioned, uh, at least I think I mentioned, about being rejected of the world, but it's it's harder to be rejected of Christians, okay? that that That's harder. Um, Luke 9, 22 through 26. And we know that the Lord, you know, he was betrayed by one of the people, his own, that he chose. He was betrayed by his own people, so we can't expect less. Um, but anyways, so Luke 9, 20 to 26, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders, chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gains a whole world and loses himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory, in his own glory, and in his Father's and of the holy angels. So when he comes in the glory of the whole kingdom of God, okay, if we're ashamed of him and his words in that day, he's going to be ashamed of us and it won't be a good thing. But notice here, Okay, he had to suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes. And so it is with us too. Because like it says in the last days, those who kill you will think they're doing God a service. And if they think they're doing God a service, then obviously 
They're calling themselves God's people. But notice here, he brings up his coming, okay, about being ashamed of him at his coming. Because, and like it says here, he must suffer many things and be rejected, you know, first. And it's the same for us. I'm going to show you right here in Luke chapter 17, verse 24 through 33. The Lord speaking concerning the end of days. He says, for as the lightning that shines out of the one part under heaven shines unto the other part under heaven. So shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Now I know this he's speaking of his own self right here. But consider, consider. Okay, he's talking about his coming again. And he's saying before his coming, he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. But you got to consider we are the body of Christ, of which he is the head. We are the body of Christ in this earth. And so we must first suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And he did tell us, you will be hated of all nations. They will deliver you up to kill you. So he let us know, and as he is, so are we. Okay, we're, we're to be partakers of his sufferings. And he goes on to say, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be on the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. He that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And I'm telling you, this is talking about your life in the world. It's talking about, you know, go ahead, be rejected, be hated, be persecuted. And if it need be, if you're called to it, be killed for his name's sake. Because your stuff, like it talks about here, your stuff. You know, our worldly possessions, our comforts. We don't need none of this stuff. Okay, we have to be willing to let it all go. And we don't want, we don't want to be ashamed of him. You know, it's better to suffer the persecution and rejection of the world. Um, this path, this ancient path, it is ancient because it goes all the way back. It goes all the way back to the ancient of days himself. Okay, 1 Samuel 8, 7 says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And this is it right here. Like the Lord said, you know, if they hate me, they will hate you. Okay, they're not really rejecting us, they're rejecting the Lord. That is the ancient path it has been and the whole reason is they don't want the lord to reign over them even if you go back to the garden you know when satan said did god say you know oh you guys will be as gods you will be as gods knowing good and evil it's like they decided to be their own ruler to to come out from under subjection to god and herein the trouble lies when you come out from under being being subjected to God, you know, you put yourself, you, you may think that you, you're reigning, you know, your own king, your own boss, but really you're under the influence of Satan and he is ruling you. He will guide you. He will lead you and he will destroy you. So it's very important, you know, that we stay on this path. Go ahead and be rejected and persecuted and hated but stay in subjection to the Lord. And this word rejected, I mean, we all know what rejected means, but I wanted to look it up, and it meant to spurn. And that word I was not very familiar with. I did have to look it up. Um, but to spurn, abhor, cast away, you know, cast off, contempt, despise, disdain, refuse, reject. Okay, so these are things that we will, you know, experience in our life. If they hate the Lord, they're going to hate you. Okay, and this word spurn, I thought this was very interesting. When I looked it up, it meant to reject with disdain or contempt, but it had an archaic meaning. 
And, you know, I know a lot of people don't like archaic things. Like, they don't like the King James version of the Bible. They call it archaic. But I love the King James. And um, so when it said it had an archaic meaning for spurn, I was like, oh, I have to read this. And it meant to strike, to tread, to push away with the foot. And when I read this archaic meaning, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the enemy. This is so the enemy. What does the serpent do? He strikes, you know, and tread. It's like this is the, the wicked. They like, they want to tread on the righteous, you know, and push away with the foot. I, I, I saw the scripture many years ago and I have never forgotten it and I probably won't. It says uh, Psalm 36, 11 through 12. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. And when it speaks of this, this is what Satan does, you know, and he uses people. We don't battle flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, rulers of darkness of the world. So they want, he wants to remove you off the path. Not just does he want to remove, well, if he removes you off the path, you're destroyed. You know, you, you're having eternal destruction, but, but he does want to destroy you, you know. So you're, he wants to destroy your witness and destroy your, your power in this earth that you have in Christ to set the captives free, to preach the word, you know, to seek and save that which was lost. He wants to remove you off the path. But anyways, this is what I will never forget about this. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. And I just did a study recently where, you know, because it talks about how when the wicked flourish and the workers of, or no, when the wicked arise and the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be cut off. You know, like I saw the wicked spreading himself like a green bay tree and it was at that time they're destroyed. And this is telling you the same thing there. Where? When the foot of pride comes against the church, when the hand of the wicked tries to remove the body of Christ off this earth, there they fall. There they are cast down, destroyed, and will not be able to rise. And so, you know, we just have to hang on to the end. And I just wanted to encourage everybody because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never enjoyed the rejection. <laughs> I've never enjoyed it. So I'm really working on that, you know. I'm really trying to let it be ingrained in my brain, you know, in my mind. Let that be a stronghold, you know, to rejoice in tribulation, to rejoice in being persecuted and rejected. Really working on that, praying about that. So, you know, I just pray that even the whole body of Christ, it's going to, um, you know, come to that place where we deal with, you know, rejection from the world and even from Christian brothers and sisters because it tells us in the word, you know, there's going to be those that are not, they're not real. They're not real. But still, I mean, we have to love our enemies. So, you know, let us love them big. Even though, you know, they may treat us badly. Anyway, I just hope something in here blessed you. Um, just praying, you know, for the church to be strong and to stand in what is coming. Because it is, you know, at the door. As I keep saying in all these, and I, you know, I'm not trying to stick on this topic. I'm really not. I, I was looking at personal things today and out comes this whole thing. Anyway, you know, to God be the glory. Amen.